Uh, I am at a stage in my career right now in which I, I realize that I have some open questions which I don't know how to answer. And uh, because on one side I really love my job, I like the research and I, I really, I'm really, it's my passion, so it's what I want to do. But I don't see how this can go together with my, my private life and what I, what I would like to have for me and uh, for my family, for my people, my beloved ones. So the open point and the, the, the question I have is how to bring these two things together. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm a chemist and right now I'm doing my PhD in um, the University of Cologne. Um, I'm doing coatings to make your life a little bit more easier. For example, um, the coatings, um, so they are called super hydrophobic coatings. That means if you are drop a water droplet on my surface, it's just roll off and take the dust. The goal of this work is um, to invent a coating uh, which you can apply on a cooking ware so that you can use this coating in the kitchen and don't have so much trouble with cleaning. I would say I am sort of an exception. Um, I think because I am, I love science. I love my job, I really do. Um, Every time I come here, I'm just happy. There's no day where I, where I say, I don't love being here. But I also love my private life. I love my family, I love my friends, I love playing basketball. If I could choose, I would also be, love to be a basketball player. That would be also great. And um, so, yeah, I think the balance is, is, is the point where you're talking about, right? <laughs> My name is Hajar Maliki. I'm originally from Iran. Uh, I'm an international scientist and I'm a group leader in the Institute of Inorganic Chemistry of University of Cologne. In my current group in University of Cologne, basically we are um, uh, conducting application-oriented fundamental research for development of uh, bio-inspired hybrid uh, uh, functional material, uh, in particular aerogels and foam. When I was doing my undergraduate studies in Iran, it's one of the Middle East uh, countries, so uh, so it was quite, I mean, I always wonder myself that why number of the women in the in our university is very less. I mean, it was like only one percentage of our professor were, uh, were women. So it was quite sad statistic for me that to see. I mean, I, I was thinking that it would, would be somehow different in a Western country when I come to you. But when I came to you, still I, I saw that the, unfortunately the number of the women in technical science also, you know, in, even in natural science, is very, very less. So we need to take into account this problem. It's getting really, really issue, major issue. The mobility is very important for the academic development of a researcher. So you need to learn, you need to uh, actually gather your experience and expertise in order to build a very, really, really impactful group at the end. But mobility at, after some certain extent would be a little bit problematic because you need to somehow feel something from your private life. You need to find some place that Finally, you say that it's my home. I want to settle in here. I want to have. I want to raise my children in here. I finished my studies uh, in Italy, and I remember that that was the the hardest moment in 
my life probably because um, I, I moved to Germany and I, in, at the same time I was splitting up with my boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. I remember in that moment my family was my, my stone, my rock, in a sense that my parents came to Germany with me, they helped me finding a flat. They were together with me all the time in this search, in this new country where I couldn't understand a single word. And I remember this moment in which I could see the car leaving and uh, all of a sudden all my loneliness and my sadness was just uh, dropping on me. So it was really hard. And, um, and then I just put myself to work. And work saved me probably because I was, I, I've been working a lot and I've been trying to get myself busy so that I could do something and could get over what I was going through. Uh, so here on the, in the back of my desk, um, next to the pictures of uh, the moments in which I was very happy with all my friends, there is this uh, satellite image that is taken actually from uh, the measurement campaign that I was part of. Um, when I was on the research vessel Maria San Mariam, we were living from this small island that is Barbados and we were actually sailing across the ocean. First in this part in front of the island and then we went far south out of this, this picture actually. And uh, we, in all this time we were measuring clouds. And in this image you can see that the clouds has a sort of fish shape and in this configuration clouds rain much more. And this is very important, it's actually crucial to know how much rain we have from this cloud and this is crucial for climate change for example and for many other topics. But the, the exciting part of, the, of being on this ship was that uh, we knew that we were collecting measurements that could be actually useful for the next generations of scientists. For, for example, 10, 20, 30 years from now on, people would use this data and this was the most exciting part ever. I am Natalia Konlenko. I am a professor at the University of Cologne. I started as a group leader. Um, actually six years ago and since about a year I hold a professorship in cell and molecular physiology at University Clinic. And our mission is to understand the mechanisms which allow cells in our brain to survive. So we are studying actually molecular and cellular pathways which allow neurons in the brain to survive. And for instance, I'm not the person who gets the slides where my cells stained of a control and, for example, mutant condition. I'm not someone who will put the slides in the fridge and go home. Yeah? So I would really, I would need to go and go with the microscope and see immediately what is going on. Yeah? I will not be able to sleep if I don't get, if I will not look at this. So this, I think, this basically the patient. I mean, if you ask what is the leadership philosophy of Natalia Kononenko in 2021, <laughs> my leadership philosophy now is really accomplish my mission or the mission of my lab, but also take care of people. That's my leadership philosophy right now. Um, it was not always like this, you know, since, I mean, as I said before, I'm since six years now, I'm group leader and you've been thrown in a cold water, you know, when you finish your postdoc and then you start your group, you don't know how to do, you don't know how, you know, you don't have any experience. Of course, you then maybe do some mistakes in the beginning and maybe you, you kind of build your leadership uh, style based on what you experience also in your life. And I think in the beginning I, would, I was a bit more, I don't want to say male oriented, but it was someone who was doing, who was, who was leading the team without really looking at the needs of the people. Yeah, so basically giving just um, giving directions and then saying, look, if you don't fulfill the needs that I'm expecting from you, then you can just go. <laughs> but that's definitely changed since then because I just realized that, um, well, first of all, it's not like that I was happy with this style, but I just didn't know that any other style is possible. Yeah. Because of course I, you know, I used to really contemplate a lot about uh, things, of course, and how things go, and about the team and everything. And I think since then I just realized that it's much more, f much more efficient, really, to keep people happy, because the happy worker is the one who is the most productive worker. 
And I think now the, you know, the trick is really to combine, as I said, the action which will help us as a team to fulfill our mission, but also implement the strategies really to keep people happy in the team. I remember um, I was, I, I, I started here 2019 in April and two months later my, my boss, my supervisor, Professor Matu, just told me there's an event, please can you just be the moderator? And I was like, okay, and I wasn't aware of the fact that there will be like 500 people I have to moderate in English, yeah, about something I don't know, it was just an Indian culture uh, event. And I, I thought maybe the, the people will be like 10 people I have to moderate, it was like around 500. And then, you know, I started to think, okay, someone is just believing me, I can do this. Even he doesn't know me that well. And this is the part where I start and still this pushing to something, like believing in you, saying, okay, you, you just do this research, keep on going, and your work is good. And this sort of appreciation is what, yeah, what gave me the self-confidence and also feedback. Feedback, I think, is a really um, huge point in, in my career, what I really, really need. I need feedback to see, yeah, sort of, um, yeah, to, to, to getting the self-confidence. Yeah. So for me, yes, so I, you know, I was, I was a group leader here and I knew, I, oh, I mean, I always knew I wanted to have children. It's always, you know, how do you find a perfect moment? But there is no perfect moment. That's the truth, right? So you either do it or you don't do it. I think for me, that was really clear that was always clear from the beginning that I should not and I do not want to choose. That was very clear for me. I want to have both. But of course, as I said, you need to have some prerequisites. I think the childcare and someone who is flexible, if your partner is flexible, that's already enough to do both. I travel every day. I commute every day from Frankfurt to Cologne. That is four hours in total. And um, I choose the really, um, I'm aware of the fact that I'm losing a lot of time. I'm sure about that. But I also, um, this is the sort of my balance to be able to see my mom, my family every day, not only at the weekends. So for me, Balance means to have also um, caring about my private life. I remember my best friend, uh, her name is Sintu, she always says, when, when do you have a normal life? When I just, because she has, um, um, a little, she had two, two little girls, and she said, you know, a normal auntie will just come over and, and do some homework with them. But you are always in the train somewhere. And uh, this is something where I know it, it's not normal, it's just the way I live right now, but it's limited. I know that one day it will be better. I will be living next to my work. Uh, it's just, yeah, a limited time. So it's okay for me and um, yeah. And female scientists need to see some professor, female professor actually in their field, field of study. Otherwise they will wonder that whether they are going to face the same problem in the future, whether this, they are in the right place and whether the, the, the major that they actually selected for their future career, whether they are in the right decision or not. So therefore the role model, female role model especially, should be increased in the university and institute, institute I think. We have been showing a lot of different problems and issues that women have to face. And I think it's clear that uh, part of these are uh, among the reasons why there are so few women in science. It's hard and it's difficult and it's making people angry to quit what they like to do, right? Everybody could say that. So I don't see why women should quit. And there is no reason for that, actually. So I'm sure that I will find my own solution to my problem. But I also think that uh, also the scientific world has to find solutions for this. Because the problem is there, they cannot close their eyes. It's evident and it's, there is people talking about that and it's raising their voices. So this will no longer work. It's 
this problem or this issue we're facing right now, it's not over. We have, this will be, we have to work on this one like every day in, in, in little things even, even in little things. Yeah? And I think the way you're doing it is just showing other women step out and support each other and um, be a voice. Yeah, like I mentioned before, you have to be a voice and don't be like go into a room and just hide your feelings and be sad. And uh, I think to be part of this project, I, 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 would, I hope I can take the opportunity and show other women that it's possible. You can reach whatever you want to do. You just have to yeah, speak out loud and fight for it somehow. And uh, don't give up, even how hard it will be. We, ha we have to keep on fighting or yeah, being, yeah, saying what we are thinking and just don't keep it by ourselves because this is not how it works. Thank you.